everybody should have a Plex media server. Let me show you how, and let me show you why. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery. And recently I shot a video where I took this 2014 Mac Mini and I upgraded inside to be booting from an SSD. And I mentioned at the end of that video that I was going to be turning this Mac Mini into a Plex server. So that's what we got on our plate today. So first of all, let me tell you why I wanted to make a Plex server in the first place. So my, my house happens to have a couple Apple TVs and Fire TV sticks and, and those kind of things for all of our TVs. Makes it real nice to stream from Netflix and that kind of stuff. But sometimes there's some videos or movies that you may want that aren't available on those streaming services. In this case, I found this DVD pack at a local bookstore. And you can't stream this anywhere. You can buy it on Amazon and it's really expensive. You know, more expensive than it should be. But I got this for five bucks. But I don't want to hook up a DVD player anywhere. So what I did is I ripped these down to files and we're going to throw those files onto a media server and that way from any one of our TVs or iPads or computers or anything in the house we'll be able to watch those TV shows as well as anything else we put on the Plex server. So any DVD or Blu-ray that we can convert we can put that on the server or family movies, CDs, just about anything. So let's look at what Plex is and uh, let's see how easy it is to install on this Mac. So if you do a quick Google search for just simply Plex, you're going to find this Plex.tv website. And it'll explain to you what everything it is, but basically it's a combination of a client software and a server software. So the client software is what you actually use to watch your media, and the server software is what you use to manage your media and tell it where to find it, and it actually sets it up so that it can be broadcast throughout your house or streamed throughout your house. So it takes care of all the transcoding and the streaming and uh, and it makes it easy to, to view. So, so we're going to skip the Plex client for now because we're going to set up a, a Plex server first. So if we go back one page here, we'll see that it said media server downloads. So let's go back there and it recognizes that I've got a Mac. So I have to have at least El Capitan or newer, so 10.11 or newer, which this Mac Mini luckily is. And you can see how often they, they update their software. This is just a couple days ago. So we're going to go ahead and download this media server. And once that's all done down downloading, we're just going to run it. And of course our Mac is going to ask us if we want to open it because we downloaded it from a, a website. And once it installs it, it also asks if we want to move it to the Applications folder. So we'll go ahead and do that. And there we go. So now it's installed. It's going to open up the Plex website for us. And at this point we need to have a, a Plex account. Now, Plex account is free, and they offer a couple different tiers that you can upgrade, and we'll talk about that upgrade. But right for, for right now, we're just going to sign up for a free Plex Media account. So it asks how we want to sign up for one. So we're just going to go back to the main page here, and we're going to click the Sign Up button. So you can, of course, continue with Google, Facebook, or Apple or just use your email address and password. So I'm going to go ahead and set up an account and then I'll be right back. All right, so I signed up for Plex just using my Google account, make it nice and easy. And once you do that, Plex can actually act as a kind of consolidator for all your different streaming services. So you can go ahead and select any of these and it will go ahead and pull that right into your uh, Plex account and then you can watch it from the Plex app. Now I'm just going to skip that for now, because we're just worried about the Plex server for now. So I'm going to go back to this other tab again, and I'm going to tell it that I'm going to go ahead and log in with that Plex account that I just signed up for. All 
All right, so it went ahead and signed me in, and it's allowed me to sync in my watch and state ratings. I'm going to say no for now. And here's just a quick breakdown of what, what Plex is and how it works. It says the Plex media server runs on the computer where you keep your media. That's what we're going to do right here. We're going to create a Plex server out of this Mac Mini. And then it's going to scan through all the media and automatically organize it for us. And it sets it up in nice menus. And then we can watch that on any of our devices. Now by default, we can watch it through our home network. And then part of that upgraded plan allows you to actually stream it outside of your house. So you can have your phone or your tablet somewhere out on the road and you can actually log into your Plex server at home and watch it. So it wants to know what the name of our server is going to be. Now you can have multiple servers on your network. So if you're going to have multiple servers, you want to make sure you give it a good name. But right now I'm just going to leave this as, let's just call it Mac Mini. And that should be good enough. And it asks if you want to allow to access outside the home. I'm going to say no for now. I'm not too worried about that. And then it wants us to organize our media. So they have different libraries and by default they have music and photos. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one for movies and you can name it something other than movies if you wanted to. But this is the media type that we're going to be focusing on. So you could actually call this like home movies or Chris's movies or you know whatever I'm just gonna call it movies it wants us to know what folder that's in so I've got went ahead and put one uh, file on my media drive and I created a movies folder so if I look in finder Here's my media drive, which was that one terabyte drive that was built in before we upgraded the SSD inside. And I've just got two folders in it right now, one for movies and one for TV shows. So basically I told Plex, I want you to look for movies in this movies folder. So once I add that library, it'll actually in the background start scanning those folders. And as you add more stuff in it, it'll scan it over time and it'll keep on consolidating that library. Now I'm going to add one more library called TV Shows. And I'm going to tell it where that folder is. So that was on my media drive, a folder called TV Shows. All right, so I've got the two that it started with that. We don't have anything in right now, but we can add two. And then we've got the two that we created. So once we're done with that, we can hit finish. And now it's going to start doing its magic in the background. So this right here, this is the actual server kind of interface that you're going to look at. And this is where you can kind of organize your, your media. So here's our two folders down here, one for movies, which I just had one movie in. I converted an old DVD of Terminator 2 in there, and one for TV shows. And look, it automatically figured out that it was the show Revolution. It knows what the season and the episode numbers are, and that's going to be based on the, the labeling of my files, and I'll show you that in a second. But it's automatically put all this, you know, real pretty pictures on for us, and it downloads all the metadata so that you can keep your library looking nice and clean. Okay, now just to show you how I had formatted the, the files to begin with, if I look on my media drive, you saw I had those two folders. And you can put these really anywhere, just as long as when you do create the libraries, you point them in the right place. So I had the movie right here, and I just had this one file, Terminator 2, and it's just an MP4 file that I converted. In the TV shows, I have the name of the show as a folder, and then I have the season of the folder. So if I had more than one season, they would be listed out here. And then inside that season, here's the file name is the show, and then S01E01. That tells Plex that it's season one, episode one. Now, Plex has lots of resources on their website on proper way of labeling your your movies and your TV shows. 
So that, that's worth reading if you're going to be adding a lot of stuff. If you're adding just your own files on there, maybe some home videos or something that you've got on old tapes that you've con conver converted, then go ahead and just drag them on there, and it'll usually just bring up a thumbnail of some scene from that movie. But in the case of this type of show that it knows what it is, it's going to go ahead and pull all that information in for it. Now from this screen here, we've got two different ways of looking at it. We've got the recommended, and then we've got the library. I prefer looking at the library, because it basically just shows you all your stuff in alphabetical order, and then you can drill down into the seasons, and then you can drill down from the seasons into all the individual episodes. All right, now that we get where our server all set up, and you saw how easy that was, I'm going to show you how to play it on one of your devices. All right, so now, now once you got that Mac Mini set up or whatever computer you decide to use to set up the server, you can really put that anywhere in your house on your network. It's best if you put it on like Ethernet, but it would work on Wi-Fi also. And you don't even have to have a screen and keyboard or anything like that set up. You can set it up what they call headless, which means it's just running somewhere without a display. Now, if you do that, it obviously makes it a little bit harder to manage your media, you know, add more media and stuff. So if you want to do that, I would go ahead and enable in the Mac like a VNC remote login. So you can log into it from one of your other computers, and that way you can, you know, copy files and rename stuff as you wish. But if it's just sitting somewhere on a desk with your uh, screen on it and everything, then it's a lot easier. So now we've got that running. We don't even have to worry about it. I've got this... Plex app downloaded. This is just a Mac Mini. So right out of the App Store on the on the Apple App Store, I downloaded Plex. So we'll run that. It obviously wants to know who we are. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in. All right, I went ahead and logged in. It says Plex needs local network access. Obviously, it needs to be able to look on your network to find that server. So we're going to click OK on that. Now it's going to look to see what servers that it thinks that I have in my house that belong to my account. And it found Mac Mini right there. So I'm going to hit continue on that. It wants to know what sources I want pinned to my sidebar. So I can pick any of these other ones. They're all just set on by default. So we'll just leave that as default and hit continue. Again, it wants to know if we want to add in any of these additional services. I'm just going to skip those for now. And here is my Plex Media Client. So I still have all the stuff that they recommend, and Plex actually has movies and TV shows that you can watch. And But here is my information, my movies and TV shows. And from the sidebar here, I can go straight to either movies or straight to TV shows. And the same thing, I've got my recommended tab down here, or if I just want to see my library view. And then you can drill down into what you want to watch, and what season you want to watch. And just, net, just like Netflix, you can start playing. All right, so this has been just a very brief overview of what Plex is and how to set up a Plex server. And if you need to know more, obviously go to their website. They've got lots of resources there. They do offer that Plex Pro account, and it's $4.99 a month, or they have a yearly plan, or they have a lifetime plan. I happened to pick up the lifetime plan probably a couple Black Fridays ago when they had it on sale, and I've been using it ever since. But it, it gives you a couple options, such as, uh, let's say I've got this iPad here, and I wanted to download a couple movies from here to the iPad so I can go on a flight and watch it without having any kind of internet or anything. It allows you to do that. And like I said before, it allows you to stream from outside the home. Maybe I'm in a hotel room somewhere and I can stream right from my home server. So a couple of those things. You don't need it at all. Uh, a lot of the stuff that we, obviously everything we did today didn't need that pro account and uh, it's, it's completely fine. So I suggest you go ahead and try it out, get it all set up, see what it's worth to you, and then wait for one of those sales to come on. So that is going to wrap it up for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it. If you did, please give me that thumbs up. If you like this type of content and you want to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So thank you as always for watching, and until next time, 
Peace out and geek out.